Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. Over the last few weeks, we've been slowly working our way through the beginning stages of our Model A restoration. As with any restoration project, one thing often leads to another, and we found ourselves working on several different things at once. A few weeks ago, while we were waiting for some of our parts to come in, George pulled off the carb and began to work on cleaning it up. And boy, was it ever dirty. Before he knew what hit him, he'd put in a full weekend polishing it up. Little did we know the adventure and education that this one single part was going to put us through. It's Carb Week at Epic Neon. Let's get to work. It's been a busy few weeks at the shop. We've installed a new battery in the car. The battery box is located inside the car, under the floor of the passenger seat. We debated back and forth about whether to stick with a 6 volt or move to a 12, but ultimately we chose to stick with the 6. Next we drained and changed the fluid in the transmission and in the differential. Model A's were designed to use 600 weight oil, an extra heavy clinging type oil in the rear axle. We used a squeeze bottle and a pour spout and used just about two quarts total for the rear end, transmission, and steering box. Moving to the front of the car, we pulled the kingpin assemblies for replacement. We had hoped to be able to keep them, but upon further inspection, they simply were too worn and had to go. We intend to replace both left and right kingpins their bushings, bearings, felts, cups, shims, and lock bolts. We're still on the hunt for a kingpin reamer to ream the bushings for the front spindle bolts, so we'll take on this project another day down the road. We've continued our research into our brakes and continued to clean things up, but there isn't much use really getting into them until the kingpins are reamed and installed. So we've put this project on the back burner for a little while. Having previously pulled the carburetor, we quickly realized that we would likely need a rebuild kit and a brand new float so we began researching our carb. At first we thought we had a Tillotson, but the more and more we looked at it, the more doubtful we became. It just didn't quite match any of the pictures that we were seeing online or in the catalogs. After a few days of research, we did what we probably should have done from the start. We put the question out to the community. Utilizing some of the Model A groups on social media, we learned that we had a Marvel Shebler carb. Back in the day, Marvel Shebler built a replacement carb under the Allstate brand. 
With this information in hand, we began the process of learning all that we could about it. One of our contacts at the Model A Ford Club of America connected us with David at Renner's Corner, Early Ford Parts, and boy, was he a wealth of knowledge. The Model A has two things that are unique to its fuel system. It uses gravity to feed fuel supply, and it uses an updraft carburetor. This is why you must always shut the fuel off when you're not using it. After talking with David for about two hours, George had the rebuild kit, replacement float, and some Marvel Shubler nozzles and gauges ordered and on their way. David sent over a treasure trove of reference materials for us to look at, which we poured over and filed away for future use. Over the course of the next few hours, we carefully reassembled the carb. We began with the float, float level gauge, and shims. Once we had that together, we began working on installing the jets, fuel inlet valve, and gaskets. With the car back together and on the car, we checked a very important box in our restoration process. Join us next time as we continue our restoration of our 1930 Ford Model A on Epic Restorations. <laughs>